What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Pride Detroit YouTube channel. I'm Mika, once again, joined by my guy Morgan here. And Morgan, we're back. If I had, like, we'd have to deal with licensing, I would be playing We Are the Champions right now because the Lions <laughs> officially locked up the division for the first time in 30 years. Big time win over Minnesota. A really fun game. And, and I know the final score shows it as it was much closer than it was, but it, it never really felt like this was out of the Lions' control at any point, really. No, and... In my opinion, if it weren't for Justin Jefferson doing some godlike stuff, I said it on uh, Dan Pask's uh, podcast, and uh, yeah, it would have. That was a butt whooping, in my opinion. Um, the Lions yeah. beat them, and you know, all phases. They had some prayers answered by Justin Jefferson, but yeah, at the end of the day, Lions got their hat and T-shirt, wrapped the division up, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to get into it because there are a bunch of big plays, right, Miko? Yeah, honestly, this would be one of those types of videos where, again, we could probably spend 40 minutes to an hour breaking down all the great plays that happened on both the offensive and defensive side. But to keep things simple, we're going to focus on some of the bigger things that happened, primarily focusing on Jameer Gibbs in this film breakdown, as well as breaking down the secondary. Because, Morgan, let's like we can't sugarcoat it for a lot of the, the season. There's been a lot of questions about the secondary and a lot about. A lot of questions about their ability to create turnovers or just make an impact. And I think in this Minnesota game against, like you're saying, one of the God tier level wide receivers in the NFL, they did as good of a job as they possibly could. And they made a backup quarterback look like a backup quarterback. Yeah. And, you know, I, we figured Mullen was going to be pretty turnover prone if, you know, he, they heated him up and they got pressure on him and they really did. They, they made him uncomfortable. Uh, he got greedy. You know, we're going to get into some of those towards the uh, back half of the video, uh, the the interceptions. But, yeah, the Lions did a good job of baiting him into some things, uh, you know, using some zone principles and uh, sending some blitzes at, you know, at him that weren't your typical. Like, you know, they were doing some simulated pressures, things like that. And, uh, yeah, it definitely rattled him, right? Yeah, absolutely. But before we get to that, let's first start off with – Morgan, a guy that I'm starting to feel more and more confident about, at least saying that he should be heavily involved in the Offensive Rookie of the Year conversation. A couple of weeks ago, I was kind of starting to poo-poo it, basically saying, like, you know what, this is probably C.J. Stroud's award to win. For good reason. C.J. Stroud has been probably better than advertised. Uh, but after missing a couple of weeks, I don't know if he's been ruled out for this week or not, but... I think when you get when you have guys like Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta that have been equally as impactful for their teams, they start to rise up the ranks in terms of being legitimate contenders for offensive rookie of the year. And when Gibbs is doing plays like these, like it's it's kind of easy to see why. Yeah, and you're starting to see why Brad Holmes and the rest of his staff were so excited to get Gibbs where they got him in the first round, right? Because He's making plays like these where it's just a different caliber of athlete. But beyond that, he's a really good running back. He understands, you know, what what's happening to him and how to best leverage the defense, you know, in his favor. Uh, does a really good job here. Gets a really good block, like you said, Miko, uh, from Sam Laporta, 87 in line there. Uh, kicks out 88 uh, and then ends up sealing him as Jameer bounces it outside. But that's some impressive speed to, to be able to press the line of scrimmage like that, come to almost a complete stop, and then hit the gas again and just leave a cornerback in the dust, man. Special. Special. And to be able to show great balance, right? We've talked about this before about how he kind of has that Alvin Kamara-esque you know, play to his game where he doesn't go down typically all that easy from first contact, so he has great balance, still has a nose for the end zone, is still has great vision. And then, like you said, has that great acceleration to be able to stop, start again, and be able to beat everyone to the end zone. Yeah, and you're you're starting to see it, and we'll see it in the next uh, rep as well as the one where he snatches that guy's soul in the secondary. But his feet are also just incredible. Like the way he chops them in the hole, uh, the way he can stutter and stop and start and you know pivot and you know hit that dead leg that people you know fall over from. Yeah. It's just, it's impressive. He's the whole package and he's more physical of a runner than I gave him credit for coming out of Bama and Georgia Tech. I just didn't think that was a part of his game. But yeah, like you said, Miko, he's got some of that uh, Kamara in him, Kamara, excuse me, uh, where he's able to just absorb contact, but almost just like shrug it off. Um, 
Yeah, this is a nice one too. Uh, God, I love this block from Panay. All pro, Panay Sewell, knock on wood. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. Gets the chip, climbs to the second level and gets Hicks and makes this essentially a walk-in for Ja. And like I said, like I, I kind of want to back up what you're saying in, in terms of, again, Ja being more physical than I thought he would be. Obviously, he didn't have to use it on, on this play, but I mean, again, he still uses that great vision, still uses that great ability to accelerate through a hole. And something that is not really synonymous with his game that is typically with most scat backs is he doesn't waste a lot of movement. He doesn't he doesn't have to chop his feet unnecessarily. It's usually very decisive. It's usually a really nice jump cut or whatever he needs to do to get vertical. And then he's bam, right there through the hole picking up, you know, huge chunks of yards or in this situation, picking up a touchdown. Yeah. And it's, he, you're right, Miko, he doesn't waste a lot of movement and it's very just, I'm going to get where I need to go as fast as humanly possible. And not many people are going to be able to catch me. Also shout out Graham Glasgow here. He had a really good block, uh, right guard 60 next to Panay uh, gets the seal, gets his hips around and basically just creates a big old alley for Ja to run through. Um, I love it. I love when the Lions can get into the low red like this and yeah. I feel confident, right? Like it, it really is like in watch this week, they'll struggle in the red zone. But for the most <laughs> most part of the year, knock on wood again, um, you know, they just they're really doing a good job of executing down in the low red, especially when they decide to keep the ball on the ground. Um, just because you can run behind a Panay Sewell and a Graham and a Frank and you can make a lot of good things happen when you do that, right? Keep it simple. Yeah. I, and again, even on that play, Sam Laporta had another really good block. Like, and these are solid blocks against defensive ends. And I think that's the type of stuff that usually you start talking about those things with your tight ends uh, and going into year two or three of their careers. Like, okay, hey, starting to put on more strength. Like Sam has started to show that growth even, you know, in his rookie season. So he didn't have like the best game statistically. This was a, this was very heavy on Ja. I thought, you know, Jared Goff had a really big game. Obviously, Amon Ra has had a big game. We might have to do an Amon Ra focused uh, top plays video one of these days because I feel like it's been a while since we've really highlighted him. But getting to the play that you were talking about for this, to me, has to probably be the play of the game offensively. Um, number oh, yeah. 21 is going to have to deal with this for the rest of his career of people being like, hey, remember when that rookie, you know, basically snatched your soul and sent you to the shadow realm that that's this is what they're going to be talking about man like whatever you know show you're a fan of stranger things he's in the upside down you know whatever what have you right like this is a crazy play um and it's just one of those uh you know that mic'd up i don't know who it was maybe a defensive lineman but he gets he gets a move put on him in the hole and he goes oh you know? oh yes I can't like, remember I, who that was, but yeah, I re I know exactly what play you're talking about. Oh, what the? I mean, you looking stupid, bro. My leg almost broke. I, I said, "Oh." <laughs> we'll have to I link want it. sound. I want sound from this play because there's no way Harrison Smith and whoever 21 was didn't have a sound effect come out of their body that was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, and it's tough, too, as a as a teammate. Like, there's nothing really to say. Like, it's almost like getting crossed really bad in basketball. Like, yeah. it, nothing, nothing really to say, man. Like, it, it was bad. Everyone saw it. Um, the good thing is for football, like, you can, you know, you got to move on to the next play. But, yeah, this is, this is crazy. Like, I could watch – I've watched this a bunch of times because everyone, the national media got a hold of this. And I'll tell you this, it got me up all the way off the couch because I'm watching this at home. It was an away game. I was watching it at my, uh, my girlfriend's mom's house, actually. And me and her uncle both got up off the couch because I thought this was a house call. Like, this is just a really good tackle by, I don't know who that was, but was it uh, Daniel Wanham. Hunter? Oh, Wanham? Okay, yeah. This is a really good tackle by Wanham because once he sent homie to the Shadow Realm, I thought he was gone. I thought it was deuces. Yeah, no. Damn. Number 21 owes Wanham like a dinner. He owes him some like he owes him some favors because if not for this <laughs> tackle, if not for that tackle, we would still be seeing this play ran over and over oh, yeah. and over again. Like it's that's some even crazy more of a highlight. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's a good point because it, it's even more of a highlight if it's a 30-something yard touchdown or whatever it was. And the thing that's Lord. crazy, I posted it on Twitter. Like that was Jaws' like second like wow play. The other one that yeah. he had was the spin move that he had on Harrison Smith. Mm-hmm. And again, that one we can't talk about really. Like as much as as much as we should hype that play up, we can't because he fumbled on it. Oh. But this is the type of stuff like Morgan, you and I are talking about where it really does become really hard to keep him out of that offensive rookie of the year conversation. I know CJ Stroud is going to be again probably still the favorite. I know Puka Nakua is probably second runner up to that. But Jameer Gibbs and what he's done over a thousand scrimmage yards, having 10 touchdowns at this point in the season, like that needs to be just as equally highlighted. I don't know if there's ever been a three-way tie for offensive rookie of the year, but I would take it at this point. <laughs> Absolutely. Like I, I love Jaws whole game. And to be fair to him on that fumble, sometimes a defender just gets a hat on the ball and it's going to come out like, I'm not I didn't blame him one bit for that fumble. Like he had it he had it put away. Uh homie just got a hat on it and it's gonna yeah. come out, man. I've fumbled the ball before in that situation. I'm like, dang, I had that thing put away, but helm is pretty hard, so it's gonna, it's gonna pop out. And that's all you, you know? can basically do. And I think he responded yeah. really well after yeah. that turnover and still was able to have a monster game. And uh, the coaching staff trusted him too, which was cool to see, right? You know, like yeah. I went back to the position coach is like, hey, bounce back. You know, if you if you have it out there like a loaf of bread and it's a fumble, then, yeah, you're going to have a different conversation and you might sit down a couple series. But at the end of the day, they trusted him and look at all the plays he made. Right. Absolutely. And speaking of making all the plays, as as exciting as it is, Morgan, to talk about Ja and everything that he was doing, you know, for the Lions offensively. We get to talk about my favorite side of the ball, which is the defensive side, but specifically the secondary. And we talked about him a little bit last week. We're, we get to talk about him again because if Atu Melofanwu has officially arrived in the NFL and you you try to keep things under check because it's only been a couple of games, but the things we're seeing him do on the football field in all aspects of it, it's it's really hard to keep expectations low for this kid, Morgan. Yeah, and you're starting to see why, again, why the Lions took him where he did. Again, I know I said that last week, um, but Brad, he was a part of that initial Brad Holmes draft class in 2021. He's big. He's fast. He can run. He's learning how to use his body as a safety. Remember, he played corner coming. You know, that was what he was drafted as. So this was a game where I feel like even more light bulbs came on for him. Like, oh, this is how you do this. So Mm -hmm. this is perfect. Like, I don't think it gets much better. It's a perfect breakout on the ball uh, out of his back pedal. Um, perfect. I wouldn't say, you know, you're going to know better than me as a former DB, but love how he flips his hips uh, and just runs at the ball and is able to make a play on it because this is this is big time. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some technical things, right? Like maybe his back pedal could be a little bit smoother and, and things like that. But when you're the level of athlete that Ifasu is, like – yeah. Technique can take a backseat to just God given ability in this situation because again, he he does a good job of doing the other things well. He keeps his eyes where they need to be, and he's able to, like you're saying, flip his hips and immediately crash on the football and be able to meet Justin Jefferson at the point and get a pass breakup on a guy that we just said, Morgan, is really tough to disrupt. <laughs> yeah, for my money, again, Jefferson's the best receiver in football. He proved it again against the Lions, despite, you know, everything stacked against him in terms of his who's throwing him the ball and everything. But, yeah, it's a good route, and it's just good, like, by if he, you know, in his own principles and making a play on the ball and being on time, right? Like, that's the big thing for, I feel like, guys that are learning to play safety is, like, learning to break on the ball and arriving at the right time. And that was a that was really good to see. And he's done a lot of that over the last uh, few weeks, hasn't he? Yeah, and I think this is the type of stuff that Aaron Glenn is talking about when he met with the media today, and he's talking about like if he's starting to understand what it takes to play safety, because it is it's a drastically different it's a it's a different beast in terms of corner, because it is so much more of your you know your reading and your reacting, and you have to be able to to quickly be able to make decisions and at the same time know your responsibilities and coverage whereas with corner a lot of times if it's man you know hey i just got to stick with my guy throughout his route tree and not allow a lot of separation if it's cover two or cover cover three or whatever the other types of coverage is like okay i have to get to this landmark 
with safeties, it's like I need to be able to keep an eye on everything happening in front of me, but at the same time, making sure that I'm giving enough depth and an understanding of what could possibly happen behind me and giving support to, you know, the corners on both sides of the field. There's a lot that goes into it. And it's like you're saying, it's one of the reasons it's my favorite position, because the guys that do it well and the guys that do it the best, they they're they're few and far between. And I'm not saying that if he is quite there yet, but through two games, he's played like one of the, the better safeties in the NFL, technically being able to make plays. And, and it's just something that's really encouraging to see. Yeah. And if he can continue to stack good weeks like this, you're it's just going to. It's another building block moving forward because I know we're going to get into it, but I do think there's going to be a world moving forward where you're not going to want to have him off the field a big chunk of the time, and you're not, you know, you're, there's going to be a lot of personnel packages where you have uh, Iffy, C.J. Gardner Johnson, Kirby, and Brian Branch all on the field at the same time because it just gives you uh, so many options in terms of what you can do uh, in terms of like what concepts you want to do. What do you want to blitz? Do you want to drop in zone? Do you want to run man? You yeah. Do it all. And another guy that's going to make it really difficult for them to figure out what they want to do in the secondary is, is Kenneth Vildor, right? A guy that they picked up not too long ago. I'll be honest with you, Morgan. I didn't expect a whole lot. I expected just to be another body that they could possibly rotate out or just have in for special teams, or whatever the case may be. But this is a big boy type coverage play from him where, again, you're lined up against one of the best, in your opinion, like you said, the best wide receiver in the NFL, and you got to do it by yourself. Yeah, and it was a good job of initially switching because they're in man. So as the motion comes over, uh, Vildor actually slides out and, you know, takes Jefferson and does a good job, man, just stays in phase, doesn't get overly grabby as uh, Jefferson releases inside and stays in his hip pocket and is able to contest at the, at the, at the throw. But Jefferson gets up wanting to, you know, wanting a flag, but you're not going to get that. That was awesome. In my opinion, you know, that's what they, that's what coaches are teaching. You know, I can have my hands on you, but I'm not impeding you. Um, Right. And yeah. That's perfect. No, and, I, and, and I love you saying that, right? Like he's not impeding, he's not tugging, he's not pulling. So like in, in a play like this, yeah, the thing that I that stands out is like there's no panic, right? There's no panic in Vildor in, in this situation. He doesn't get so overwhelmed of like, oh, you know, uh, God, who's what's the dude on Twitter, Mr. 30, where it's like, oh, I'm gonna piss down my leg. Like yes. almost too big, like, like that doesn't happen. And this was a big point yep. in the game where you know the Vikings end up having to settle for three instead of getting a touchdown. So, like those types of opportunities. Are, are really big for a secondary, like I said earlier, that has kind of been up and down at times throughout this season. But when you're getting guys that are, you know, former practice squad guys or guys that were just recently signed on and they're being able to come in and, and play a pivotal role in helping you lock up the division, it, it gives you a lot of confidence going through the rest of the season. Yeah, and it, it's another testament to the coaching staff, in my opinion, Dre Bly, uh, AG, the rest of the guys. And it's a testament to Kendall Vildor being a pro too, right? Like he's a, this is, like you said, there's no panic, um, gets in his hip pocket, knows he's in the red zone. There's only so much depth Jefferson can get. And I like that Vildor knew there wasn't a flag because he got up height. Like he knew, he was like, that's a clean PBU. Jefferson got up with his palms up and yeah. Vildor didn't, Vildor didn't even get up looking for a flag because he knew. He was like, nah, but that was, nah. So you can always tell there's DBs make themselves more guilty sometimes because they'll look up and look for it. You know, or they like, just try to like, or they just don't look around at all. They just start kind of like yeah. heading back, like, yeah, <laughs> kind of just kind of hold you, your head down. <laughs> yeah. If you get up and you're hyped though, typically, you know, like, no, nah, that was clean. I'm good. You know? Yeah. And my bad. I called him Kenneth Vildor. You're right. Kendall Vildor. I don't know why. Oh, I didn't <laughs> even hear you say Kenneth. I listen, they sound similar. So that's on me, oh. but. No, but that's like, again, that's a really like strong, good play by, by again, a, a reserve corner that's, again, getting his opportunity and making the most of it. Um, but it wasn't just pass breakups, right? We, and, and it's not, we'll get to the interceptions a little bit later, but it wasn't just pass breakups. This secondary also got after the quarterback quite a bit. Three sacks from guys in your secondary. And we're going to start this back off with a guy that we started talking about with the secondary, Eni Fatsu Melifan, who once again, showcasing the ability to blitz from the safety spot and the lions again showing that like hey if he's good at something we're just going to keep doing it until you prove that you can stop it 
Yeah, and they're moving him around, um, and they're having him walk up late. You know, the Lions have a stacked box here. There's eight in the box. Um, if you look at it, you know, four down linemen, four, uh, three linebackers, and a safety, and iffy. And he steps out uh, outside the tackle and just wins this rep uh, against uh, Chandler. Just Chandler. Chandler's there. And mm-hmm. he tries, you know, does his best to picking up Iffy, but this is just a rep of like, yeah, this this is a big, strong athlete, and it didn't really matter, and was able to reach over and bring Mullen down. But I like that they're doing this now. When you get Gardner Johnson back, you have three uh, DBs that you that are not fun to deal with when they blitz, and Gardner Johnson, Brian Branch, and Afatu Melifonwu, right? Like that's going to be fun. Yeah. And I, and I don't like know if that. we said this last week when we talked about if he getting a sack, but like the thing that I love most about this is that there's no panic. Like, you know, sometimes you get secondary players that they get so wide eyed at their opportunity to finally blitz the quarterback that they, they lose sight of, of, of their technique or they just go too wide on their lanes or whatever. If he seems to be like really perfecting this when it comes down to, like you say, moving down into the box and being able to rush on the outside or even have a couple opportunities in the game where he got to rush from the inside. Like he's kind of becoming a bit of a savant at getting to the quarterback in these situations. Yeah. And it seems minuscule, right? But <clears throat> when you watch where Melifonwu starts and then where he eventually blitzes from, it's, it's subtle, but it, it throws a wrench in the offensive lineman's uh, plan. So y- you'll see Darisaw point at Iffy, but then uh, you know, Darisaw blocks Hutch if he wins against Chandler, and that's all she wrote sometimes. So I like that AG's gotten more aggressive with these. Like, okay, my defensive line isn't getting home quite enough as I need them to in order to like really affect and help out my coverage. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start manufacturing these pressures. So they did it last week. We saw it where they would drop Hutch uh, and they blitzed uh, Iffy from like the sink or the safety position like when he was way up like 20 yards off the line of scrimmage so yeah when they mixing him it from up. the up when they basically yeah, blitzed him from man. the up <laughs> they did and he ran all the way down state and 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 harassed uh russell wilson the backup quarterback for the denver broncos <laughs> so, so oh man that's crazy but yeah i really i'm excited because i really i want to see gardner johnson on the field and i want to see what this defense starts to look like when mm-hmm. Glenn has all these pieces at his disposal, because then we could start seeing some stuff. He's he's figuring out what works, like right. He's he's figuring out his gumbo, what he what he needed to put in it to make it start, you know, tasting really good. So I like yeah. this. I love this development, and I know you do too, as a former DB. Yeah, I, I, they actually asked Aaron Glenn something about this in his press conference today, and he was talking about how he's had so much success. A lot of his success with the secondary has come from you know working with corners and then kind of helping them transition into those safety roles. And mm-hmm. that's where you get like the same thing with Brian branch, right? A guy who it's a little bit of the, of the, of the inverse where a guy that played a lot of safety, a little bit of nickel, but he's getting an opportunity to do some of the same things that if he's doing and being able to play some safety, but at the same time, still manning his nickel position and being just as aggressive where he was able to pick up their second sack. And Morgan, Brian branch had a really good game. But because of the likes of Iffy and Kirby having such big games, I think I think Brian Branch just kind of gets left out a little bit. Yeah, and it's it's a shame too. And I don't want that to happen where it's like <laughs> we're already starting to expect this from like the Brian Branches and the Amon Ra St. Browns of the world. Because they're both excellent. Like Amon Ra's elite, and then Brian Branch is quickly becoming one of the better nickels in football. This is awesome because I truly think whenever Branch or like Melifonwu or Gardner Johnson blitzes, it's almost like blitzing a linebacker. They come in there with such like intent, man. Like he gets downhill and I love that this is almost a stunt. Uh, Branches like ends up behind Hutch in this view. Uh, Ham motions in, but it doesn't matter because Hutch occupies both blockers for a second and Branch just goes in off that inside shoulder and is able to blow up Mullen, man. I love that. Yeah, it's almost in a sense like using the double team against the offense, right? We know how Hutch typically is getting heavily double teamed. Well, it's like, well, fine. If you want to dedicate two guys to him, we're just going to have a guy blitz off of that. And we're going to do it from so far out of the formation that like you're not going to have a chance to account for him. And I think that's the thing that has me the most excited about these safety blitzes or these nickel blitzes is that it's really going to force offenses to rethink what the Lions are doing in these formations that they have. 
Yeah, and it starts to add a element of mystery to the Lions' defense, right? Like it's more to deal with pre-snap, and it just makes the simple things more difficult. And you know, eventually, will the Lions give up a big play when one of these blitzes don't get home? Yeah, like maybe that that might happen. That's just the that's just the nature of the beast when you do send extra rushers like this or simulated pressures. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the same time, if you're having a high hit rate and you have these like hybrid players like the Lions have a bevy of, then it could end up being it could be a it could end up masking other deficiencies on the defense, like you know, where the Lions don't technically have a shutdown corner on their roster right now. But if you continue to have success like this, you can get by and you can mask some of those, you know, uh, deficiencies or holes, if you will. Yeah. And so with that said, let's let's go back to to Ifatu Melifon, who actually picked up the, his second sack of the game, because I think what you're talking about is, is kind of what we see in this play where, again, you you have so much to consider with a Lions defense that, again, an Ifatu Melifon can walk up to the line and you're not sure, right? Like, sure, he's blitzed from this position before, but he's also dropped in coverage a few times in the game as well. So now you as an offense have to determine, like, how are we going to handle this? And they did not handle this well, Morgan, at least on this particular snap. No, and Jalen Rees Mabin uh, does a great job here of, again, like similar to what we were talking about with Melifanwu, not making it obvious. You know, he's not making it obvious. He's coming pre-snap. And then as soon as the ball snapped, he occupies the attention of 66, the guard, and 32, uh, Chandler, you know, doesn't go the right way. Um, we'll say he just doesn't really see Melifonwu coming. And, yeah, it's a another easy sack. And there's no wasted movement, I feel like, when Branch and Melifonwu blitz. It's just a sprint to the quarterback, and they're just looking to tattoo somebody. Yeah, and if you're going to give open, like, rushing lanes to these guys, like, this is what's going to happen because you're not to your point, Morgan, right? Uh, you were saying earlier, like the Lions are kind of using their secondary players in place of linebackers. You're not dealing with guys that are probably running, you know, four fives, four sixes. You're dealing with guys that are running like four threes coming at your quarterback. And like there, there's nothing that you can deal do in those situations. And in most situations, if they're either, you know, coming down the middle of the offensive line or again, coming from a blind side, like if he is in this play, your quarterback has no hope whatsoever no and if he's one of those athletes like everyone in the nfl is an athlete but melifonwu is definitely like an s tier athlete for all my anime nerds out there like that man uh, there's a, go look at uh, kent lee platty's uh raz card for melifonwu um i know we talked about that before but it's i believe it's in the 9.7s or 9.8s so yeah I, I love that they're – and this is good coaching to me. Again, I've said it so many times through the years now, but it's putting – it's realizing what your players do well and putting them in those positions a lot. Um, and that's – it seems like they found a little bit of a sweet spot for Malifonwu. And But then, like you said, Miko, he can do it all. He's made a lot of plays away from the line of scrimmage too. So, man, Like, yeah, like, realistically, what do you do with this defense? And so, so we got pass breakups. We got secondary getting after the quarterback. And then there's, there's there's this final piece to this secondary that has, again, has been there at times, but maybe just not as consistently as the Lions have needed to be. And that's turnovers. And the Lions got those in bunches in this game. Um, we're going to kick this back off with Brian Branch. Again, the the another star in this game that's probably just being a little overshadowed. But Brian Branch continues to kind of, again, kind of keep his name in the conversation for defensive rookie of the year, in my opinion. I don't know if he, I don't know if he has the single stat that's going to put him over the top, but he's done everything in the NFL that he could possibly do on the defensive side of the football. Yeah. And he, this is him understanding what coverage is being played and like where his help is. So he's not concerned when, is that Addison Miko three? Yeah. When Addison Addison gets a pretty clean uh, inside release, and uh, Branch gets in phase, you can see him reach his arm out momentarily to where he's only a step or two uh, behind Addison, and he knows he has Cam Sutton as the deep safety in this instance because Kirby had to roll down as they motioned the receiver to the top of the screen. So Sutton's there, 
And Branch just really runs the route for him. He's in phase, and then this is kind of a silly, this is fourth down, right? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, at this point, whatever, I guess Mullen, he just threw it up there. But, yeah, perfect technique and ends up with an interception. Yeah, and this is the type of stuff like that we talked about with Brian Branch in the draft process, right? Really smart player, really understands his roles and responsibilities on the field. So there's no, again, no panic. Similar thing that we said about Kendall Vildor, not mm -hmm. having any panic, even if you're beat off the line, because you understand, okay, this is what I need to do to get back in phase. And then, yeah, it's a bad throw by Nick Mullins, but it's again, Brian Branch still has to make the play. And yes, it was fourth down. So I guess they would have got the ball anyway, but this is the type of stuff that you want to see from your, your young players. It's the type of stuff that you want to see from your secondary and this was the first turnover. So this be, this kind of starts that snowball effect that we started to see later in the game where Kirby and Iffy start to get involved as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sure Branch was almost surprised that Mullen threw this, right? Because he's like, all right, I'm right here. You know, Cam's right behind me. We kind of got this bracketed and he still cut it loose. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll take it. That's a nice little stat pattern. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, like Brian Branch has done just about everything you could ask a defensive player to do at this point in the NFL. He has sacks, he has tackles, he has PBUs, he has interceptions, he has forced fumbles. I don't know if that's enough, Morgan, for him to get defensive rookie of the year, but obviously like he's going to have every Lions fans vote when it comes to that award because he's doing it all and he's doing it all at a high level. Yeah, I mean, I would hope Branch is up for, I know he's going to be on the all-rookie team, uh, but at this point, I don't think it's going to be outlandish for Brian Branch to end up as a Pro Bowl alternate or maybe even just a flat-out Pro Bowler um, with aspirations to even, you know, all-pro in the future. Like, I just think that's the kind of player he is. He's just impressive all around, like you said. Yeah. And so another player that finally kind of, <clears throat> I, 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 I've, I've been saying this and I'm going to stick to it, I think... Kirby had his best game of the season. I think prior to this, he's had he had good performances, but this game in particular, he looked like the Kirby Joseph that we saw a lot of last year. Of again, being in being in in position and doing what he does best when he has to be able to cover, you know, the deep deeper halves of the field. Yeah, and this is just he's just awesome at this is where he's at his superpower is, in my opinion, where he's deep and he's just patrolling. And reading the quarterback's eyes, uh, I believe you know the lines are in yeah lines are in zone here, and he's the the deep safety and just this is just awesome ball tracking, and I love that he started celebrating when he intercepted this. That had me dying laughing in the moment. I don't know about you. I know I I was more so in the same camp as you. Like I was just like, listen, dude, live your life. Like didn't yeah. cause it, did, this didn't turn into anything negative. I understand how some people are like, what are you doing in this situation? <laughs> listen, after the type of season Kirby had been having up to this point, he's allowed to be excited about finally getting another pick. I think it had been like three or four weeks since he had last had an interception. Like, let the man live. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited that Kirby was excited because. Well, again, this is where he this is where he excels and perfect perfect principles, and it makes him it makes it easy for him to make this play uh, when it's you know served up to him. Uh, and I know we're going to get to some other ones here, but yeah, it was great to see this just because I know the Lions' defense has had its up and downs you know over the course of the season, but if it can start to find they can start to find their footing, mm -hmm. it's a good time. It's a good time to find it. Well, and that's the thing, right? If Kirby can get to the point where he's able to, like, you know, play in his element and play with the level of confidence that he wants to, and still, again, at the same time, be in phase and understand his responsibilities in the game, you get more plays like this, and the Lions will be better off for it. Yeah, and this is just Mullen getting greedy a little bit again. Like, Kirby's in a full-on backpedal, just, like, striding backwards, ends up near the logo. And when Mullen cuts this loose, I, I'm sure he doesn't think that Kirby is going to make this play, but he does and ends up with his second pick, right? Like, look, try to pause it when when Mullen lets this go because it's going to be funny. Yeah, so see where, see, where, see where Kirby is? That's a lot of ground to cover, man. And he does, and he makes it look easy, right, Migo? 
Well, this is the thing that we talked about a couple weeks ago when we were kind of, again, <laughs> giving Kirby a bit of a hard time in terms of like, if he just trusts his athleticism, does his job, and then allows his athleticism to show, he can make plays like this. This is... Mm -hmm. Go back to like when we when we get to the back pedal. Look at how like lackadaisical his back pedal is. There's no immediacy <laughs> to it. And then it's like, oh, oh, he's throwing this. Sure. Let me get on my horse. Yep. Like that's the type of athlete Kirby is. So like it's it's great to see him have games like this. And I hope this is a catalyst to him having more games like this because the Lions are gonna need it, especially this week against Dallas. But it it just goes to show, right? He has all the physical tools to play this position at a high level. He just has to, again, get the mental side of it down and be locked in at all times. Yeah, and that's where, like, it's funny because they're in zone there, and I Cam Sutton actually does a really good job. It was a, a out and up ran by Minnesota, and he almost runs it for them, and I bet you he's surprised that Kirby's there, like, because he almost got his hands on it, and Kirby's there. He's like, where did you come from? Did you teleport here? Uh, I'm, so, like, I'm, yeah. I'm glad you pointed it out because that was like in my notes when I was first looking at that play. They're like, oh, Cam does a really good job, too, of making this a tough throw because, again, he has to like Nick Mullins has to throw this over the top. And Cam mm. is basically like you were saying earlier, right he's basically running this route for Justin Jefferson. But, yeah, Kirby being again, showing off his superpower, like, no, I can cover all this space and I'll and I'll get the pick on this one. Yeah, that was beautiful. A, a beautiful sight. So we have two great picks by by Kirby. We have a really impressive pick by by Brian Branch. But the pick of the game, again, possibly Beautiful. the play of the game, once again belongs to our guy Ifatu Melifamu. And if he is this is this is pristine. This is we talked about it earlier with the PBU, but this is true like high level safety play here, Morgan. Yeah, and he's got multiple people running across his face. Like you know how it is, Miko. You're you know you're processing. You know you're in your zone. You have to pass things off. Um, and the Lions do a good job because there's a lot of crossing going on uh, for mm -hmm. in this concept run by Minnesota. And Melifanu isn't phased by any of it. And yeah, this is just they're really good at this. Is ah uh, man again if they can start finding their footing, the defense, and they can start to gel. And they can work zone concepts like this when they are facing some of these mm -hmm. teams with a lot of weaponry, right? On the, you know, at the skill positions. This is how they're going to stay in games because if you can start pressuring the quarterback and trusting your DBs in cover three and different variations, cover six and what have you, that's how you can stay in games. Because, you know, yes, other teams might have Justin Jefferson. Debo Samuel, AJ Brown, etc. But if they can trust their principles and play within themselves and make these kind of plays, then the Lions can beat anybody. And they showed it again by a tough win. I don't care who's playing. That's for Minnesota. That's a tough place to play. Yeah, they're playing for their playoff lives. They have a superhuman at wide receiver. So, yeah, tough, gr good win. And I'm just excited, man. It was a, so, such a fun, it was such a relief when if he picked that off. That was my favorite play of the game for sure. I was going to say, because you and I were talking beforehand, like leading up to that, right? You know, the Lions get a, a, a sack fumble from Romeo Aquara. John Kaminsky doesn't, isn't able to secure it. Then we're on like third and a mile. Justin Jefferson pulls off, you know, turns back the clock to, to Buffalo of last year, makes another impressive catch. And like, there is. There's a little bit of unease there of like, are the Lions going to have to wait even longer to lock up this division? But again, the guy that has kind of been the star player this this week's reigning uh, defensive player of the week or last week's defensive player of the week um, just really showed up. And and I again, I don't know. There, there should be there. There might be some level of like, hey, let's keep things in check when it comes to talking about Ifatu. But at the same time, like do deserves his flowers because to be a, a former third round pick, you know, not really pan out that well at corner, have to go through the adversity of, of injuries to get to this point where again, you're not just starting and making plays here and there. Like you're playing high level safety play and, and, and it's helping your team win games that deserves every bit of the standing ovation and every bit of the praise that we've been giving him the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and I really hope, and I'm I'm fairly confident in the fact that Aaron Glenn and the rest of the staff will find ways to keep him on the field uh, 
when it, you know, when it permits, like in terms of personnel, because I want to see a lot of packages where it's the four players we mentioned on the field and you find ways to get them on the field. Iffy, Brian Branch, Kirby, CJ Gardner, Johnson, they all need to be on the field on got to have it downs, figure it out. And I Mm -hmm. think that's where the Lions staff has been good as of late. Like, okay, this player is playing well. How can we get them on the field more? Jalen Reeves Maben was on the field uh, for the one sack that if he got, you know, and that was almost like an assist because he took up that, that guard perfectly. So yeah, I like the fact that he's seeing more reps, Jalen Reeves Maben, I mean, um, so yeah, you're figuring they're, they're starting to adjust and yes, the personnel isn't what they thought it was going to be at the beginning of the season with, when they signed, you know, Gardner Johnson and he's missed most of the year. And when they signed Emmanuel Mosley and he played two snaps, like, but they're making do. And if, like I said, I said it a couple of times, if you're going to find your footing, now's the time to do it. Yeah, I was just about, I was, literally, I was just about to get to that point. Right. Because I think. Yep. We, we, we looked back a couple of weeks and obviously there were there were fans that were upset. There were fans that were frustrated with the the output and the, and the results of, of some of those games. Again, losing to Green Bay, losing to the Bears. And there was a lot of frustration. But at the same time, this is part of the reason why, on one hand, there was there was always that level of like, hey, there needs to be some level of like we need to stay calm because this team can still figure it out. But at the same time, it also justifies some of that criticism because this team wasn't playing at this level a couple weeks ago they weren't having this type of success from some of the players that they were rolling out and kudos to to dan campbell and kudos to aaron glenn to being willing to switch things up on the defensive side and say listen we understand that jerry and tracy are 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 are, you know big time players for us and normally they they can be relied upon but they're they're struggling a bit and we're going to switch things up and we're going to try to roll the dice on some other players and and having the the wherewithal to make that call yeah, and it takes, you know, it takes a steady locker room too because, you know, in some locker rooms that might create too many waves and rock the boat too much, if you will. And in this instance, they're like, hey, they've always made it about competition and they gave Vildor and Khalil Dorsey and Iffy and so on and so forth chances and they're making the most of it. So, uh, yeah, that's how it should be. That's how a competitive team, you know, keeps getting better throughout the course of the season. And hopefully we can see that uh against the Cowboys this weekend, right? Yeah, that's going to be, I I don't even know if there's any way of underselling how big of a game this is going to be. Obviously, the two (sighs) seed is going to be up for grabs and and things of that nature. But Morgan and I are going to be back with that film study tomorrow. Spoiler alert, there are two players that we're going to heavily focus on. Let me know in the comment section who you think it is that we're going to focus on. But it's going to be a film study primarily on two players. And those two players may be the, the the catalyst to, you know, determining whether the Lions get a win or a loss in this Cowboys game. But with all that said, guys, that's going to do it for this week's film study. Those are some of the top plays, some of the top performers from the Lions win over the Minnesota Vikings. Let us know in the comment section below. What did you think of some of those plays? What's some of the other plays that you really loved from that game? And who are some of the other big time performers that you kind of want to champion in the comment section from that Lions win over the Vikings? Also, if you're looking for any more content on the Detroit Lions, you can always head over to prideofdetroit.com and check out all the latest articles we have uploaded over there. And last but not least, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Both of those things help out this channel a lot, but more importantly, it helps keep you guys notified anytime we upload any new content or go live over here on YouTube. But with all that said, I'm Miko. He's Morgan. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. The Lions are indeed division champions for the first time in 30 years continue to celebrate it and we'll see you guys in the next video